Hello and welcome back to the restoration rebuild of this Fokker DR1. Um, as you can see, uh, that's about where I'm up to. The fuselage has been substantially sorted out, tidied up. Um, the rodent Nord holes have been patched and filled. Um, the major job was to move the firewall back to accommodate uh, the engine. I've also yesterday put in a new block for the undercarriage, which will be quite narrow, but will make it work. Um, obviously, the lower wing's been covered, although it hasn't been doped yet. And the upper, the middle wing has been substantially changed with these cutouts being added into the design, which I think in, dramatically improves the look of the thing. However, this is where it gets interesting because that's all that's left of the upper wing. It's basically had it. I've salvaged one rib, which is fortunate because they're all exactly the same, other than the cutout for... Um, the aerolons there's a slight shortening of some of them but this is a wreck and there's no alternative other than to build a brand new uh, upper wing and I'm going to do that by basically drawing it out uh, but I think I'm good well I am going to alter the design slightly because I'm not happy with the way the wing attaches to um, the fuselage I, I, I quite like the idea of the upper wing and the middle wing being joined because it's much less fiddle at the field. But I'm not happy with this arrangement, which is basically the cabins are glued in and they're wood. They're glued in directly to the upper wing. And they were both broken when I got this. And I suspect that's because it's a weak link. And if the plane flips over... And it almost certainly will at some stage in its life. And I think the DR1 is quite notorious for that. That's a very weak link. So I'm going to redesign it. Um, I'm scratching my head at the moment. But that's the, the journey we're going to go on. And this is the start of it. Stay tuned. So here we go. Here's two thirds of the wings. The lower wing and the middle wing. And I hope you can see there that the pattern's... Um, quite predictable each wing gains one extra panel so that being the case the upper wing will have nine panels aside as opposed to eight one two three four five six seven and there's the eighth one in there so I need to add an extra panel on the end to make up the 72 inches, which is the wingspan of the upper wing. This is what I've got left from it. They're the aerolons, which when I've looked at some drawings, they're not very accurate, so they'll be redrawn. And fortunately, I managed to save a rib. See, there it is. I've saved a rib which gives me a template approximately anyway. I think the wrong the length is uh, going to need to be made up. And, and here's a real bonus. I've saved both of the spruce spars from the original wing. Now I thought I've got nothing to lose. Let's see if I can get them out. And I took them out and I've cleaned them up. And... What I'm really pleased at is that they're straight. There's no warp in them. There's no twist in them. You can see, I hope, here, there's the scarf joint. I've got both of the wing spars to add the strength. There's no dihedral in the wing, so it's built basically as a flat wing. On this design, you can see... It's quite a conventional design. Lower spar, upper spar with webbing in between. However, I think there's a better alternative to that. And if I zoom in on this plan, which is on outer zone, this too is for a one quarter scale uh, DR1. 
the wings are made slightly differently, a bit more um, to scale, I think. Um, I'm going to go somewhere down the, that route, but not all the way. But I really like this feature. And that is they've basically made a box spar to give the strength to the wing. So using this, these two quarter inch spruce spars, I'm going to do the same thing. They use slightly um, thicker spars, quarter by three eighth, I think they use. I think I can get away with this. And then it's clad on the outside, on both sides, with one eighth balsa. And instead of having a spar above and below, as is the case here, It'll be a box bar and that'll need to be cut out. So I'm going to make out and draw out a new one of these to cut out the ribs. But the first stage is to make up this box bar. So let's get cracking. There we go. That's um, one eighth balsa. Cut to one inch wide strips. And now all I need to do is to cut a scarf joint on these to join them. Um, I don't want to use a butt joint, I'd rather use a scarf. Uh, bigger surface area equals a stronger joint. So if I put one on top of the other and cut through both at the same time, I should end up with the joints that enables me to put them neatly and accurately. There we go. I'll put a little bit of cling film underneath there, food wrap underneath, glue them together, and then the spar will be added on. The first one will be added on, then the second, and then the one inch capping strip to make a box joint. So I'll get those black glued up and I'll cut the, the other pieces out and we'll start laying this box spar together. As I hope you can see here, I've now cut two one inch strips of eighth balsa. I believe it's eighth anyway. And there's the scarf joint. I hope you can see it. And there's no fussing or messing around if you cut through both at the same time. You're guaranteed a nice even joint and it stays parallel. So I have those cut. And what I'm going to do is take advantage of this steel edge that I've screwed to the side of the building board. That ensures that the wood's not going to twist around. Now, what I have to do is to glue these to create this box spar and to do so I'm going to line it up carefully on here and then I'm going to wick in this thin CA glue now I could use white glue I could use Gorilla Glue and so on but the problem I've got with that is keeping it all square with no twists or movement in it while the glue sets if i ensure that everything's straight by lining it up by eye and using this edge i can glue along the inside the capillary action of the thin ca will run into the joint and it ensures that it's square now you'll also notice that i can't fit the whole spar onto the board well that's not an issue i'll simply Shuffle it round and turn it round and carry on with the other part. So let's get this done, yeah? If I line this up, I'm pulling the one inch wide strip hard up against here. The spars in place and initially I just want it to be tacked in place so I'll run that along, that should take the grip straight away. Straightforward principles of engineering this, a box spar or a 
box girder of some kind is a very strong structure and that's obviously what we need in the wing and I think it's much stronger than the design in the flare wing, uh, wing plan I may be wrong but that's just my view so when I'm making it from scratch why not incorporate into it what I think will work pushing it along ensuring that it's nice and square and the scarf joint in the spa is going nowhere because obviously this is as old as the model and the scarf joint and the balsa are in two separate places which is what I'm looking for and yes I could pin it down I could clamp it but there's always a danger with that that it's going to move and that's not what I'm after Right, I'm going to pause it here because I'm going to shuffle things along so I can get the end part done. There we have part of the box spa done and it's extremely strong now. The top layer to make the box complete, I will use white glue to do that. I'm going to use Gorilla Glue. I'll glue it and weight it down along here and once that's all set that's the building block for the wing and the next part could actually be drawing up a simple plan it doesn't have to be an elaborate piece of draftsmanship um, it just needs to be consistent which is actually more than some plans are so we'll get this glued up and then I'll show you how I'm going to tackle the plan here we have it then uh, this is the box spa produced and very strong and straight and true so that's what we want i think it's actually an improvement on the flare design so i've drawn out here on some on the reverse of some old wallpaper a simple plan uh, that's all that's needed you don't need to be a superb draftsman uh, to do this i've worked out the spacings here and I've double checked that they match the spacings on the other two wings. They're all the same. There's just an addition of an extra panel um, on each level. They're nine and a half centimetres apart. That's the main spar. The trailing edge for um, the wing. And this is the position of the aileron. And that's all I need. So what I'll start doing next is I'll draw out the spars, uh, the, the ribs, sorry, and we'll get them cut out. And in the next video, I'll be laying this uh, set of wings up. So until then, thanks for looking in. Uh, if you haven't already done so, please consider subscribing. The, the subscriptions are going really well. And if you've enjoyed the journey so far, please give it a thumbs up. Bye for now.